Getting to Know the World's Greatest Artist, Paul Clay, by Mike Benazia. Paul Clay was born near Bern, Switzerland in 1879. He was an important artist and a very good musician, writer, and teacher. He used all his talents to make a remarkable kind of modern art. Paul Clay loved color. Most of his paintings and other works of art are filled with beautiful and exciting colors. Sometimes you can recognize certain things in Paul Clay's paintings, such as people, animals, and houses. He also used numbers and letters of the alphabet as symbols that had special meaning to him. Paul's art is known as abstract art. The objects and figures in abstract art look different from the way they look in real life. Sometimes the objects in an abstract painting don't look like anything at all. Many of Paul Clay's greatest paintings are just colors and shapes. Paul Clay always loved to draw. When he was little, he would visit his Uncle Ernst restaurant. Paul imagined all kinds of interesting things in the patterns of the marble tabletops there. He traced what he saw onto paper. Paul Clay grew up in a very musical family. His mother was a singer and his father was a music teacher. They taught Paul to play the violin quite well when he was very young. Both music and art were important to Paul. It took him a long time to decide whether to become an artist or a musician. Finally, Paul decided to study art in the city of Munich, Germany. Munich was an important art center at the beginning of the 20th century. Artists there were trying new and exciting things. Paul met some of those artists and soon became friends with them. Kandinsky, Franz Marc, and August Mack painted in a new style that Paul had never seen before. Paul liked the bright colors and shapes these artists used, and the simple, almost childlike way they painted people and objects. He realized that a painting didn't have to look like a photograph to be a good painting. Paul worked very hard to learn all that he could about drawing with line then, he learned how to give things shape and how to make things seem solid. Finally, he learned about color. Paul also traveled as much as he could to see and learn from the works of the world's greatest artists. It was on one of his trips that Paul Clay decided he would spend the rest of his life as an artist. While he was visiting Tunisia, Africa, Paul noticed how colorful things were in this beautiful and mysterious country. He thought the light there gave everything a fairy tale look. Paul couldn't wait to start painting what he saw. The next day, Paul began painting watercolors of Tunisia. Paul showed the excitement he felt during his trip by changing the natural shapes and colors of things. Paul changed the natural look of things in his paintings for a reason. Up until Paul Klee's time, artists painted what they liked to look at or things that they were familiar with. Paul and his friends thought that a painting should be more than that. Paul wanted his paintings to show worlds that had never been seen before. Paul thought it was important to give the person looking at one of his paintings a special feeling deep down inside, a feeling a person couldn't get from an ordinary painting. 
If you look closely at a Paul Klee painting for a while, you might get a feeling of energy or movement through space or see a microscopic world never seen before. Paul gave some of his paintings a musical feeling. Even though paintings don't have sound, Paul's patterns of color and shape make many people imagine the rhythm of music. Paul Klee was always experimenting with his painting materials and with the surfaces he painted on. Sometimes he painted on rough cloth with one kind of paint and colored over it with another kind of paint. Paul used chalks, paste, and even crayons to make colors seem like they're glowing from the inside. In some of his works, you can see the ragged edges of the cloth or paper he painted on. Paul Klee always felt close to nature and carefully studied the natural things around him. When he was a teacher, Paul taught his students not to imitate a camera which copies objects as they appear. He wanted his students to look below the surface of things, to find new and exciting worlds. Paul Klee's paintings often show his sense of humor. Sometimes he used interesting titles to make his paintings more fun, like this one, Twittering Machine. Near the end of his life, Paul Klee's colors became a little darker and the titles of his work became more serious, but he still painted pictures filled with fantasy and magic. It is fun to see a real Paul Klee painting and try to figure out what paints and materials he used to make his abstract works of art so special. You can find his paintings in Lucerne, Switzerland, Hamburg, Germany, Basel, Switzerland, Bern, Switzerland, Ulm, Germany, New York, New York, Pasadena, California, and Cologne, Germany.